Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to Earth Juice. Coming up this week, rare Siamese crocodiles lay eggs and butterflies in 3D. First up, we recently reported that a pair of incredibly rare Siamese crocodiles had started nesting at a dedicated crocodile zoo in the UK. Well, we've just had an update, so we sent Sam out to see what's happened. So we heard recently that these guys have actually laid some eggs, is that right? That's absolutely right, yeah. Um, just after you'd arrived last time, they actually built the nest. Yeah. It took us a further two weeks to get one of our CCTV cameras moved so that we could monitor the nest and to catch her laying the eggs so that we knew when to take them out. The crocodiles would normally lay their eggs uh, in, either late at night or early in the morning. It was important that we knew when that she laid. Unfortunately, she laid in that two-week period and we missed it. Yeah, so uh, we actually only discovered the eggs because the male was sat on the nest. Um, well, that's good. Was that quite unusual for the males to sit on the nest? Not with this species. This species is probably has the best, best male parental care. So the males are very protective of the nest and the female and also the babies when they do hatch. Cool. Um, so we scared him off the nest purely by accident, which revealed a tiny little egg sat in the top of the nest. That must have been an exciting moment, wasn't it? Incredibly exciting, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I thought, that's oh, just a rock. And uh, it wasn't until I actually investigated further with a long lens on a camera, <laughs> uh, from a safe distance, obviously, and um, realised that it was an egg. So we've removed the eggs from the nest and we're actually incubating them artificially. So oh, do you want to come and have a look? I'd love to. Yes. Thanks very much. So Sean, these are them. This is the eggs. Um, there's only six, which normally we would expect quite a lot more. They can have up to 40 eggs in one Oh, wow. So, um, Why is that then? Well, it, it could be a number of reasons. This is the first ever clutch of eggs that she's ever laid. So that could be one. She's also... Um, uh, fairly young so that could be another reason. These guys will probably stay in the incubator now for around 90 days and then um, once they've hatched they'll go into a, a small little aquarium. So these six are actually pretty significant aren't they? Yeah when you think there's only five and less than 500 left in the wild this, these six are incredibly important. Fingers crossed they all hatch yep. and if we can we'd love to come back and film them yeah, when they definitely. have. Yeah I would love you to. Brilliant. Well, fingers crossed for those eggs. And Sam's had a busy week because he's also been out reporting on 3D scanning of butterfly chrysalises. This technique allows scientists to really understand what's going on during metamorphosis. So I'm here at the University of Bristol with Professor Kate Robson-Brown and Dr Mark Greco. Uh, so how did this all come about? Then? What we wanted to look at was the changes that occurred during metamorphosis with the internal morphology. So with the technique of the micro CT, we can actually look at that internal morphology that need for physical dissection. I had scanned insects before, but I'm an anthropologist by trade, so this was the first time I'd really um, worked with chrysalises. It's technically quite difficult because all the tissues inside the chrysalis are of a similar density, so we had to work quite hard finding exactly the right settings to get the best possible resolution of the tissues inside the changing chrysalis. So can you just sort of talk us through the metamorphosis process and maybe what you found out through this machine that you wouldn't have found before? So we focused on the tracheal system of the, the morpho butterfly, um, which is the breathing apparatus of, of the insect. Uh, it's a passive system. There are openings like portholes on the side of the insect that run all along the side of the insect, open and close, um, enable oxygen to come in and carbon dioxide to, to leave the insect. So I'm very casually leaning on the very apparatus you guys use. Do you want to talk us through what this is? This is a micro CT scanner. It works in principle very like a medical CT scanner. The main difference is that the specimen is the part which rotates as opposed to the x-ray tube and the, um, the camera plate, which in a medical CT rotate around the person, around the specimen. So we can use quite high radiation doses um, and um, focus those rays on quite small specimens and then record that on the camera plate um, and then we can use that information to create a stack of images which look very much like you might imagine a, a CT scan to look, black and white images which are cross sections through the material. So you've got all sort of those slices through the chrysalis and you stack those up and so you can make a 3D model then by using those, can you? Yes, that's right. If you imagine it like a stack of, of pieces of paper <laughs> Um, then what you can do is to track the outside surface of any feature through that paper using computational modelling and then create a 3D image which can be rotated virtually within a computer environment. So what did you find out using this that you didn't know before? What was surprising was how fast the changes occur from the late stage caterpillar to the early uh, chrysalis. We thought that would be a more gradual process 
it happens quite rapidly. Within two days, the, the changes have occurred. Well, guys, thank you so much for having me along today, and best of luck with all the research. That's this week's juice. To see our previous report on those adult Siamese crocodiles, click here. Or to see Maddie moving two huge alligators, click here. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered how you would move a giant crocodilian? Oh, okay. Hang on, here we go.